Hi, I'm Ben Marriott. In this series, we are creating this animation all inside After Effects. And in this video, we will be building the scene using our abstract sea creature. Now let's start by creating a new comp that we'll call Ocean Main, 1920 by 1080 and five seconds long. Hit okay. And let's drag in our completed creature. Now we want to fill up this scene so it looks like there are a lot of these creatures swimming around in this ocean. And then we're gonna add some effects to really bring it together. But first, let's create a background. So let's create a new solid with Control or Command Y. Its color won't matter, let's hit OK. And let's add the effect Gradient Ramp. And let's choose a dark blue and a black. So it looks like this creature is emerging from the deep. Let's drag this background below our creature. And let's resize our creature as well. Let's open up its scale and take that down to around 60 to give some decent space around it for our other creatures. And now we want to have some duplicates of this creature behind this one in the background that are much smaller and some ones in the front that are much larger to give the scene more depth. And then we're gonna add some motion to them to give them parallax, which is where objects closer to us appear to move faster. And we're gonna do that quickly using nulls. Now you can do this many ways, including using a camera in After Effects and placing them in 3D space. But for a simple zoom, a pan or a motion like this, I find it much simpler to just mimic that motion with nulls. Setting up a camera and even getting into the mindset that requires moving things around in 3D space is just overkill for a scene like this. And with nulls, we can still keep our ability to edit them easily enough. So let's duplicate our creature and scale it up to around 150%. And move it to the side. This is going to be a creature that is much closer to us. And let's change the color of its label down here to yellow as well. So we can tell it apart more easily in our timeline. And let's duplicate this two more times and place these around the scene. There, now we've got our foreground creatures. Now let's do the same for ones in the background. Duplicate our main creature, scale it down, move it around the place, change its color, then duplicate it to fill up the background again. Now we need some movement. We've got our creatures separated into three different depths, the front, the middle, and the back. So we don't need to animate each individual creature, but we can animate each group of creatures using nulls, which are essentially empty layers. So let's go up and create two new nulls and rename them parallax front and parallax behind. And let's move the second parallax above the shrunken down layers in the background. And we won't need a null for our middle creature because there's only one of them and we can animate its position property. So for our closer creatures, let's select them all and parent them to parallax front using the pick whip. Do the same thing for the creatures in the background. And now we can move around this null and the creatures at that depth will follow. Now all we need to do is animate the position of these nulls. But let's animate our main creature first. Let's keyframe its position at the start. Maybe have it around a third of the way towards the bottom. And then at the end of five seconds, Let's have it a third of the way towards the top. And that seems like a good speed for this little creature to be swimming. Now we can use that as a guide to our other layers. So the ones in front, because they are closer and they are larger, they're going to need to move more. So let's make sure we move it more than a third of our screen. We'll open up its position and keyframe it close to the very bottom. And then at the end of five seconds, pretty close to the top. So these layers are moving around three times as much and that feels about right as well. Let's do the same for the parallax behind null, this time only moving a little bit. There, I think that speed is looking pretty good. And now that we've got all our animation in here, we can easily rearrange these creatures as well. So I might move some around the frame just to leave plenty of room so there's not much overlap. And now they're spread out just a little bit nicer. And so these aren't all animating in sync or pulsing at the same time, what we can do is just grab each layer and move it just a random amount to the left. And that should mean that they're just not triggering all at the exact same time. There, that feels a little bit more natural. Now for the effects that are gonna tie this all together. The first will be blurs, which is really going to add even more depth. So let's select one of our layers in the front and we're gonna add the effect camera lens blur. Let's increase the blur radius till it's nice and blurry. I think 50 works well here. We do want them pretty blurry. We can copy this effect and paste it onto the other two creatures in the front. Let's also paste it on the creatures in the back. And I think we should increase the blur radius more, maybe up to 100 and then copy and paste that blur to the rest of the creatures in the background. There, now we've got more depth. And I love the soft blur this effect gives. So let's actually make one more duplicate of our creature to put at the very front. So let's duplicate this creature and scale it up massively up to 500%. And blur it even more from 50 up to maybe 80. And now it looks like we're seeing through a creature that is right up to our eye or right up to the camera lens. And because it is so close, we're going to have to animate its position property moving even more. And now we've got something really in the foreground. And these are some render heavy effects. But in the next video, we're going to explore some new After Effects features that will really help us with that. 
And now let's add a few effects over the whole animation to make it more cohesive. So let's start by creating a new adjustment layer, placing that on top of all of our layers. First, let's add some glows because I think it would be great to make this yellow almost feel like a bioluminescence. So it starts glowing as the creature pulses. So let's add the effect glow. And the only property that we're gonna change here is the threshold. The threshold is what determines how light something needs to be in our comp for it to glow. So at 60, both the blue and the yellow are glowing, but the dark background isn't. So if we increase the threshold, the blue, which is darker, will no longer glow, just the yellow will. I think around 85% is good. Now let's add another glow, which we can do by duplicating this with Control plus D. And this one, we're just gonna increase the radius way up to 150. And that will just give a soft glow around our already glowing areas. Now you can do this as much as you want, duplicating glows and increasing the radius, but the two will work fine for us here. Now let's adjust the colors because the yellow over the black makes it look kind of muddy and we're getting a lot of orange and red on the edges here with all of those glows and blurs. So let's hide the properties of our glow effect and add a curves effect. And we're gonna adjust each color channel. So for the reds, let's just take the reds out of it a fair bit. For the green, let's increase the greens. And then the blues, let's increase those. And let's bring the blues quite up a bit and the darks as well. There, that's looking much more like an ocean. Now, because we've got a lot of soft gradients, we can run into some banding issues. So let's hide that under some grain. And I happen to like a film grain look anyhow. So let's add the effect HLS Auto. Change the noise from uniform to grain and change the lightness from zero to 2%. So now there's a subtle film grain over everything. Now we've got all of the effects on our scene. In the next video, we're gonna look at what we can do to render this most effectively with all of these effects.